morning and good to have you with us in this edition of the Urban Debate. Viewers, the big story that the entire country is talking about today is about how Vikas Dubey, the so-called dreaded gangster, the dawn criminal with over 50 cases against him was gunned down outside Kanpur on the outskirts this morning when he was being taken from Madhya Pradesh to Uttar Pradesh to, uh, to be produced in a court in Kanpur. And of course, there are many, many questions of whether it was an encounter. And if it was, why did Vikas Dubey try to run when he kind of staged his own arrest yesterday in Ujjain? Several questions that we will be raising this evening. Several questions that perhaps the UP government or the U UP police have to answer us. But here is what happened. In case you missed the news in the day, here is what happened this morning. At about 6.29 a.m., UP Special Task Force was en route Kanpur with Vikas Dubey. They took him, they took his charge from Ujjain, from the Madhya Pradesh police. They were bringing him back to Kanpur by road. There was a cavalcade with multiple cop vans. The car carrying the gangster turned turtle at around 6.45. Dubey tries to escape. And a gun battle breaks out. I am right now telling you what the, we've learned from the police. And so by, by around 7.30, 7.40, Vikas Dubey was shot dead in this encounter. Now there are multiple loopholes that have emerged ever since the news about this encounter broke out, viewers. I'm just going to give you a few examples. There are many, many more that will come up in the course of our conversation over the next two hours. But first up, the police said that he was running away, that he was trying to escape, that when the car turned over, he managed to get out and break out and even snatched a gun of a policeman and he was trying to run away. Well, then the question is, if he was trying to run away, how come the bullet wounds are on his chest and not his back? How come he was shot three times in his chest? The other claim that the police made is that he was he tried to flee, of course, once the car toppled. But there are many, many who say that he wasn't really fit enough to run. So did he really do that, especially when he himself kind of staged his surrender in Ujjain just 24 hours ago? Police says he snatched a, a, a gun, a weapon from one of the cops after the accident. Now, shouldn't a guy like him be kept handcuffed? Even if he is in the car with policemen. Police claims the vehicle in which Dubey was toppled. And that's the car he was in constantly. But there are many who say that earlier he was in a different vehicle. And the accident vehicle was a completely different one. Then of course that the, the car actually got into an accident. Because a, a herd of buffaloes came onto the road. But if there was an entourage and this, this wasn't the lead car, then how come this is the one that ran into this herd and actually ended up in an accident? Then there was another claim that Dube was killed in retaliatory fire. Again, why would a man who actually was missing and the police was clueless for over a week with him traveling through four states, then turn up at a temple get arrested only to again try and run away when he was nearing Kanpur. Makes no sense. He was in a jail. That's where he has all his support group, all his family members. Some of the instances that I have pointed out, and we will bring, you out, bring out more instances. But basis these, here are the few specific questions that the UP police must answer. Why were the media vehicles stopped just before the encounter? So before the encounter, as everybody was crossing this, uh, this toll where there were barricades the barricades were pushed just as the cops cars passed and the media cars that were trailing this entourage keeping an eye and literally tracking these cars every single kilometer were not allowed to go ahead and they were later told that there has been an accident and an encounter why is it that Dubey tried to escape after staging his own arrest why is it that the police hasn't yet clarified on his transit demand. Arrested in Ujjain, being produced in court in Kanpur, 
Was there a transit uh, a remand that was given? What was the process of handing, taking over? These are some of the questions I will ask my experts as well. If Dubey was running to escape, how were the shots on his chest? And Dubey's car in the convoy was not the lead vehicle, then how did it hit stray animals, the herd of animals which was on the road? First up, I want to go across to Priyank. Priyank's been at that spot now for over 12 hours, bringing us non-stop reports about what really happened. Priyank, many questions that you've also raised through your coverage. You know, take us through the details of what you saw, what you learned from people there. Uh, see, uh, Tanvi, I would like to uh, tell it to our viewers that since last evening at 8, uh, since the time uh, the car kit left from Mujan, we have been uh, tracking each and every uh, minute development which is happening in the case. Uh, the first instance came at around 8.30 when uh, one of the media crew's uh, you know, car keys were snatched by the UPSTF personals and later to that uh, the car key was kept at the second uh, tour plaza from where he somehow managed to get that. And this report, I, while I was in uh, Kanpur, I was getting continuous. Uh, then I got another call from one of my sources that another media crew has also been stopped and detained for around 50 uh, minutes. Uh, we moved to uh, this national highway where uh, the cops spotted our vehicle around 6.30 because what I could estimate that uh, the vehicle would reach around 6.30 and uh, for the viewers of Mirna, we would be, uh, we would have been in a position to give them a better view of how uh, uh, this uh, gangster, this monster was being brought uh, to uh, Kanpur and uh, should have been produced before the court. Uh, then came a very uh, important development when both the carriageways of this uh, particular stretch of the highway, uh, we are talking about National Highway Tanvi, uh, which was blocked for a good uh, 15 to 40 kilometers. Uh, we were stuck at one location, we saw an ambulance coming and uh, what we could think that uh, the car would be uh, going towards the court direction, but that did not happen. Uh, then we got information that one of the vehicle has turned turtle. Soon after reaching the spot, it was very clear that after a minute touch, uh, the bumper of the TUV was uh, broken and the car had turned turtle. And uh, if you look at all the visuals, it's quite clear that at every Tolnaka, all these vehicles have been uh, moving in the middle lane. So how is it possible that suddenly the vehicle which had uh, uh, coincidentally uh, or the, uh, deliberately Vikas Dubey came on the extreme left-hand side of the highway and then the vehicle turned turtle. Uh, I calculated the distance from uh, the car till the spot where the Vikas Dubey was uh, gunned down by UP police personnel. It was exactly 93 steps from that uh, 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 from the spot and uh, if you look behind this particular location where the body was found uh, for almost a kilometer it was clear visibility even if someone would have been running anyone could have seen that the big question which we are asking as of now that if Vikas Dubey had some kind of a problem in walking whenever he used to walk he used to limp uh, 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 how is it possible that 14 men of UP police personnel could not overpower Vikas Dubey they could have easily shot uh, Vikas Dubey uh, below uh, the knees. As you know, Tanvi, more than 3,000 encounters has, uh, has happened in the state of Uttar Pradesh where all these uh, criminals have been shot below their leg. If that can be scenario for uh, those, uh, those favorite criminals, why this uh, uh, scenario was not opted for Vikas Dubey? What I can sense and what our viewers should also understand that this encounter drama, I would say, was enacted twice in a time span of 24 hours. First, uh, one of the key AQ, uh, associate of Vikas Zubay uh, was being brought in a transit man from Faridabad uh, while he was about to reach uh, Lucknow. The tire, uh, uh, the vehicle broke down and the suspect, according to UP police theory, attempted to run towards a farm where he was gunned down and he was killed. Since Vikas Zubay was the uh, gang leader, the bigger and the larger dramatic videos came uh, before our viewers where they saw the car had turned turtle and then we got to know that Vikas Zubay was shot by the UP police personnel. So if you look at the details, at every instance, they have been major lapses. Uh, the UP police will never be able to uh, uh, give a clear uh, uh, you know, picture of what happened, how it happened, because at every single instance, a man who limps was not being able to, arrest, to be arrested by 14 men of UP police. A man who has been on the run was not being able to be arrest, arrested by the UP police. A man who uh, wanted to surrender uh, surrendered actually 24 hours ahead. Uh, then UP police came up with the theory and they are saying 
that he was running. So these kind of bizarre claims, uh, it will be very important that if any neutral agency come and uh, probe this particular issue, uh, every uh, you know lie which has been uh, uh, circulated uh, through the press releases will be exposed. Hmm. Yes, absolutely. Priyan, thanks so much for really summarizing all of those points, uh, you know, the, the questions that have to be asked, uh, uh, facts that don't really connect, where there is a missing uh, piece that has to be explained. Thanks so much for bringing us all of those updates. In fact, very quickly, I want to run a report that Priyan sent us earlier in the day, because this is in daytime and you can see that entire location. You can see where the accident happened and at what point, how far away from that was the body of Vikas Dubey found where he was gunned down. Take a look at this special ground report. It was around 6.30 when Vikas Dubey was being ferried by the UPSTF, the most wanted criminal, in a TUV vehicle when the uh, weather was changing, it had started drizzling and the vehicle came and hit the side divider of this national highway. The vehicle was later on found here by us when we saw that the TV had turned turtle. According to UPSTF, Vikas took the weapon which was belonging to one of the investigating officers and then he started walking. As uh, we are also walking from here, uh, it is very important to uh, 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 consider that Vikas had uh, injury in his one of his leg and he used to limp. The UPSCF personnel who were also there in two other vehicles kept on monitoring Vikas who was walking towards the extreme end of this particular uh, farm area. As you can see, this is not the end of the road. Whenever any weapon is being used by the police officers, the protocol says that if they are using it, that should be the last resort. What if Vikas would have attempted to run away from here? For sure, the strong police personnel of UPSTF would have managed to uh, nab Vikas because he had only 13 cartridges in his pistol. And right now, where we are is the exact location where Vikas was gunned down by the U UPSTF uh, police official. This is the location where, uh, where he was uh, gunned down and it's exactly 93 steps from the location where Vikas uh, uh, vehicle was uh, found by us and this is the location where the body was found. So he could only barely walk for 93 steps after which he was gunned down. Even if he would have attempted to run away from here, those 14 or police personnel would have certainly managed to arrest him. So what was the need of firing bullets on the upper part of his body which led to his death? All right. Now, I want to also play out some comments that we got from the eyewitnesses there. People who were present around that location when the accident took place. But before that, let me get a quick round of reactions from the guests who are joining us right now. Let's also say good evening uh, to Mr. Yashavardhan Azad, former IPS officer, Vikas Singh, former ASG, uh, Justice Yatindra Singh, former Chief Justice of the Chhattisgarh High Court, uh, and Mr. Neeraj Kumar, former Commissioner of Delhi Police, uh, also joining us this evening. Let me actually first step go across to just, uh, Justice Yatindra Singh uh, and, and, and ask him this question. Justice uh, Yatindra Singh, from the points that we've raised so far, uh, you know, what our reporter was telling, the, the, the mismatch that is between the various versions that is being given to us, um, does it look like there has been for sure some kind of a foul play here? Well, could be. Could be. I mean, I, I'm not saying uh, uh, what the police is saying is not right or police is saying wrong. It could be true. It could not be true. I mean, I don't wish to comment upon it because it's uh, it's uh, such, uh, truth is stranger than fiction. I mean, we are sitting in a air-conditioned room discussing a situation, not realizing what was the position there. It is very wrong on our part to speculate.
Okay, fair enough. I understand what you're saying, but there are few versions that don't make sense. Would it be believable that an entire entourage was actually traveling? The media was behind them, and suddenly the media was blocked. And the next thing we find out that there has been an accident and an encounter. The fact that this man was running away, and uh, you know, you would have presided several cases. Would it make you ask the question that somebody said he was trying to get away? But if you look at the bullet wounds, they're all on the chest. If I was a judge doing the case, I will definitely ask this question. If it was a prosecution, I'll ask the question. Let's see what's the answer they give. I mean, without getting their answer, you are asking me to decide to give a ruling, which I think is not right. No, absolutely not, uh, Yashis Yatinder Singh. We don't give a ruling here at all. We are the ones who ask the questions and bring out the facts. Uh, which we believe need some amount of explanation as well. <laughs> so, but let me let me also bring in Mr. Vikas Singh. Mr. Vikas Singh, uh, yes, Mr. Vikas Singh. Good evening to you. To your mind, does should there be you know some amount of in-depth uh, investigation into what really went on here, or is the fact that there is enough public sentiment to say, well, he was a criminal? who killed many people, who had 50 cases against him. He was on the run, so that's that. Well, Tanvi, we are a country which is governed by the rule of law. And if we go by the rule of law, then in that case, Kasab did not have to take face trial. Kasab could have been just shot like this, the way Vikas Dubey has been done. But Kasab had done a much serious, much more serious offence than this. And he had killed much many more people than what Vikas Dubey had done in this case. So. And we spent hundreds of crore to keep him alive for him to face the, the bullets. Tanvi, we have to realize that in the international arena, whenever a report of this kind comes in the Western press, this is the only news which you will find coming up in, in, in their press when they talk about India, when this kind of thing happens. And that's very, very sad. If you ask me if, if it were probable, probably we would have all said what Justice Rindha Singh said, that I don't know what their answer is. But if you look at the facts, the facts actually stink in this case. Stinking facts. They, 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 have, uh, they didn't arrest Vikas Dubey. Vikas Dubey surrendered. He himself said that I am Vikas Dubey Kanpurwala. Now, if somebody is surrendered, it means that he is not wanting to run anymore. He wants to go, get, go back to the law and he wants to face the law. If you are taking somebody of this kind to, to a police station, then in that case, if you had still some apprehension, that he may run away or he may fire, then you could have put handcuffs on him. Inside a police car, there is no, you know, um, 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 binding on the police to not put handcuffs. And when this kind of a thing happened, he was started in a different car, changed to a different car. Ultimately, the, the car which turned turtle is a different car. Whether the bullets were fired after it turned turtle, how did he run out? I mean, it's all... Completely, completely inexplicable. Oh, yeah. And I tell you the fact that mm -hmm. UP police, UP government has still not suspended all these officers very clearly proves beyond doubt that this was a mandate given to the police from the higher management. And that brings the larger question of police reforms. Prakash Singh, even in the judgment of Prakash Singh versus Unit of India Supreme Court, has said that the police should be completely away from the, from the uh, government of the day. And that no government, whether it be BSP, whether it be BJP, whether it be um, RJD, whether it be SP, whether it be Congress, or and none of them are ready to give up the strangle load on the police. And that is why what is happening. Because I feel that if Vikas Dubey had been kept alive, then the, the people who lost their lives, those eight, eight police personnel who lost their lives in that police station, you could have really actually found out the conspiracy behind those people who are who were responsible for uh, that leak out happening. And maybe some politician may have been named in that leak out. And that is what we have lost now. Now, today you have killed Vikas Dubey, but you have not been able to identify yes. the people who were behind those killings. And those people will go scot-free. And that is the real uh, problem in this case. And I feel very strongly that these police personnel, if they have not been suspended till today, till now, means very clearly that the government of the day is is a mandate this this killing was a mandate given by the government of the day and that has, that has been executed by this police personnel the way it has been done so it's a very sad uh, reflection of uh, policing in our yes. country it's a sad reflection of you the know you've raised 
Yes, Mr. Singh, you've raised a very important point. And before I actually go to our police experts, let me just, uh, you know, bring this point back to Mr. Y uh, to Justice uh, uh, Yatendra Singh. Justice Singh, the fact um, that, you know, in, in such cases, we end up probably losing a lot more important information and a lot more important facts. This was a very connected man. Uh, for years, he thrived. Uh, with governments that have come and gone, he survived and he's thrived. He's obviously ha enjoyed a lot of support. He had great connections within the police force. Uh, till the point that, you know, this encounter happened, people were uh, tipping him off, saying, well, somebody is after you, there's going to be a raid, there's going to be an arrest. All of those details now are going to be forever buried with him. Is that a concern that we see in these kinds of instances that not only are we silencing a dreaded gangster, but we have also now effectively, in many ways, silenced a lot of dirty secrets? You are starting with an assumption that's an illegal killing. That's the point number one. Point number two, uh, that's right. Those information has gone. That, that point is there. But kindly see this man's history. He kills a minister of state in a police station. And when the different government comes, not a single person gives evidence. He is acquitted. Kindly see the ethos of our country. Kindly see the, what the system has come to. The system is yeah. that if an innocent man is arrested, Put in a jail, he breaks down, and normally he commits suicide or become a mental case. But if a gangster is put in the jail, he forms his own clique. The jailer, deputy jailer, everyone becomes his pal, DM, everyone becomes his pal, and he starts running everything from the jail under the protection of the state. Unless we change this entire system itself. You know, he becomes actually that these gangsters generally in jail become more powerful than they are outside. And when they come outside, I know personally some of them become MP, MLS. Again, though, what it what actually is required is that we must change the system. It is we must break the criminal the uh, criminal on one side, politician on the other side, criminal on one side, police on the other side. Criminal on the one side and the and the, you know bureaucracy on the other side. The chain between them, the connection between them. First, we must break that. We completely, we should completely change it, and we should also improve our judicial system, which is absolutely broken down. Unless we do it, perhaps there is some kind of pessimism in me. But th that's exactly my point, uh, uh, Justice Singh, and you, you hit the nail on its head. The fact that, you know, you're, there is so much of a uh, uh, problem within the system that people tend to lose faith in the system. Now, if we don't fix it, then doesn't, and I'm not saying this is an extrajudicial killing or this is a stage encounter. I'm simply saying that in, in, in a ro system that seems so broken where so few people have faith in it, doesn't this then become the easy way out? Yes, it, it is. And, and, and to tell you the truth, majority of the people think probably this is the only solution. The reason is the system is so rotten. It has to be completely changed. If we don't change it, this, is, this will happen. He as all, no, no, no such person will ever be convicted in a court of law. No person will come forward to give evidence. No court will convict. What would have happened okay. to this man? Okay, let me bring in Mr. Yashavadhan Azad as well on this conversation. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Finish your point, please. No, it's all right. You think another person doesn't matter at all. Let's hear their point of view also. Yes, uh, Tanvi, you have heard okay. the Honorable Okay, let judge. me bring in Mr. Yashavardhan Azad. Mr. Oh. Azad, yes, go ahead, please. Can I, can I, can I talk now? Hello? 
Can I speak now? Yes, go ahead, please, Mr. Azad. Yes. Uh, you've heard the Honorable Judge, and I'm so happy he spoke with real candor. And you've also heard the lawyer. Uh, now, here comes the professional. Uh, first question, which you rightly asked, was, if a man has already offered his surrender in Mahakal, why would he change his mind? Now, there's only one point I want to add is, while uh, he was picked up by the STF, uh, or, uh, or whichever kind of a police the uh, UP sent over there, and he was not on transit remand. They just took him because they thought uh, that within 24 hours, they'll put him before the judicial magistrate in Kanpur, a familiar ground. That's all right. What happened or what transpired is also something very important. What did he divulge? That uh, it alerted the authorities? Or what, what happened to him after divulging that he apparently changed his mind? Now, these are issues... Uh, which which only the the police also uh, police only knows now vikas has given a severe indictment of the system i totally agree with him the the whole encounter points out to a system which is favoring encounter as a justice whereas i would have hoped that the death sentence to this gangster would have been delivered by the courts but i totally agree with the justice that this system is rotten, but who is going to improve the system? The only one, unfortunately or fortunately, who can improve the system is the person who has all the powers. You know, home ministry in states is run by some heavyweight or the CM himself. It is, it is, it is not an easy business to run a home ministry. It requires dedication, it requires application, and it requires energy. It, when you have a third-rate policing, which is based on 1861 Act, you have fourth-rate forensics, you have a third-rate infrastructure, and you have a fifth-rate prosecution. You can't expect first-rate results. And that is why this system has given rise to the cynicism of people who say, encounter, this is an unfortunate state of affairs, because if this continues, this is a very grim lesson for democracy. Democracy's institutions fail because politicians take over to give selective dispensation. Selective dispensation means that in my village, the, the Thanedar, the Chobdar, Tasildar, Patwari will work along my lines, and I will give justice to people who have voted for me. This is how the mafia prospers. And this mafia and the gangster prospered through the decade of the 90s, you know, taking patronage from various political parties across the spectrum. I ag agree again with Vikas Singh that every yeah. party, to when the police is crying for reform, the, the state executive and the Babu say, nahi, nahi, tumhe reform karne ki jarat nahi hai, tum beta hamare under mein raho, aur isi tarah phalte raho, aur phoolte raho. This is the problem of democracy, and I don't think it will ever change unless the CM takes the lead and says, no, I will smash the mafia. And my last point is, in the Hindi belt alone, there have been examples of chief ministers who have fought the mafia, smashed their network, and even if they had to be kicked out in one or one and a half years, they will be remembered for long. Well, in fact, uh, you know, the one thing that this government in Uttar Pradesh claims, of course, is that how the way they have cracked down um, uh, against the criminals, the way they have actually either caught them or shot them uh, or, or they themselves have out of fear surrendered. In fact, if I can just uh, uh, read out some of those details, uh, as far as the uh, Yogi government's encounter uh, uh, details are concerned, if you see... Between 2017 and 2020, 103 criminals were killed and 1,859 were injured. There have been about 5,178 encounters between 2017 and 2019 in Uttar Pradesh. Not just that, even in this case, with Vikas Dubey's case itself, his gang is pretty much... Um, a lot of it has been wiped out already. On July 3rd, which was just a few hours after that massacre that took place in Kanpur, 
two of his aides were found hiding in one place. There was another gun battle that ensued, we were told. Uh, and two aides of uh, 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 Vikas Dubey, including Atul Dubey, were shot dead. On July 8th, Amar Dubey was shot dead. On July 9th, another aide called Bawa was shot dead. Uh, another aide, Prabhat, whom he was traveling with, was shot dead on July 9th. And of course, then today, it is the turn of Vikas Dubey. But Mr. Neeraj Kumar, thank you for patiently waiting by. Uh, one of the points that I also raised in the beginning, and I wanted your expertise on that, is there are a lot of questions being raised about the confusion, whether or not there was a transit remand. Now, what's the process? If, it's, if it is a criminal that has to be taken to Kanpur, has been nabbed by another state's police in Ujjain, would they necessarily have to go to first a court in Ujjain, get a transit uh, you know, order, and then... Or can they directly uh, hand him over to the Uttar Pradesh police who would then have to produce him in front of a court in Kanpur within 24 hours? Because the timing here is very interesting. All of this between the so-called arrest and encounter, it's roughly 24 hours. So the law on the subject, Tanvi, is uh, given in the Criminal Procedure Code, Section 76 which states that when a criminal is to be uh, is arrested, whether on account of a warrant against him or because he has committed a cognizable offence, which is punishable, uh, which is non-bailable, then the police can arrest him and can take him to the concerned court. In this case, it will be the court in uh, Kanpur. And if he can be produced within 24 hours, there is no requirement of a transit remand. It is uh, not correct to think that every time you bring a criminal from place A to place B, you must take a uh, transit remand from place A. If you are sure that you will be able to produce him before the court uh, within 24 hours, transit remand is not required. And mind you, those 24 hours exclude the time that is taken to for travel. So the UP police had enough time to uh, produce him before the court. So nobody can fault them on this that why didn't they take transit remand. Having said that, now let me uh, come to some of the questions that are being raised uh, by you and have already been deliberated to some extent. Uh, the, the doubts uh, counter uh, are unexceptionable. Uh, However, like the Honourable Justice on our panel said, I mean, no, nobody can give a final opinion without properly hearing the other side of the story and without so, The most important thing we have to remember is, has there been a single encounter in the Indian police where questions have not been raised? Questions are always raised whenever there is an encounter, only when all the victims or if the victim is a police officer, no questions are raised. No questions will be raised about the encounters that took place outside the house of uh, 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 Vikas Dube. But whether it is Bartla House encounter, yeah. where he is killed, uh, two Indian Mujahideen, uh, dreaded Mujahideen terrorists, questions were asked. And such ridiculous statements uh, made in public, uh, I will not like to repeat them because they are <clears throat> political in nature. And till today, people have doubts about the genuineness mm. of the encounter. Every time there is a police encounter in which a criminal is killed, whether he is Vikas Yadav or with uh, Vikas Dubey or whether it is, uh, uh, you know, an Indian Mujahideen uh, terrorist, questions are raised. Because they, and I have no issues with questions being raised, but we can come to a conclusion only after a proper uh, probe has been done. So, uh, for the moment, this is all I have to say. Okay. I like, yeah, come in later whenever uh, you give me a chance. Yes, I will come back to you, uh, you know, since you have more points. But let me just see if Mr. Vikas Singh wants to come in here on this point. Mr. Vikas Singh, do you agree 
that while questions must be raised, uh, there, there is a bit of a bias here. Questions are raised uh, when, when uh, you know, gangsters or terrorists or rape accused are killed. But questions aren't, you know, you don't see that kind of a reaction when eight policemen are killed in, an, uh, in a gun battle. Tanvi, the problem is that for, for the police to claim an encounter, there should be a semblance of an encounter at least. Now, here there is no semblance of an encounter also. And I'll tell you, Tanvi, that in the law, the law Commission twice has ruled in its 113th report and 152nd report that to amend the Evidence Act, that whenever a person dies in police custody, then he must be, uh, the police must be held to be presumed to be guilty for the death unless proved otherwise. And the government has, uh, till date, not amended the CRPC, IPA, Indian Evidence Act to include that section. There are large number of jurisdictions in the West where if there is a, 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 a killing by, a, 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 of, of, a, in the, during police custody, the police officers are automatically to be suspended unless a <laughs> quick inquiry exonerates them and finds them to be, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, without any guilt. I mean, our country, we are, we are, we are actually completely, uh, you know, sort of giving the rule of law a, a blow, you know, completely blowing away the whole rule of law because this kind of encounter cannot be justified. There is no semblance of encounter. Also, you, you, everything about this encounter stinks. Why was the media stopped before this place where this encounter happened? Why did the, the the police are trying to justify that they didn't want the media kind of get to go along with the... But why only at that point where this encounter takes place, the, the person is uh, uh, surrendered, he, he wants to, uh, to you know go to the law, and you say, I will not take him to the law. He has connection with police, uh, with politicians, and with very senior bureaucrats. But that angle can't be investigated now because he's not there anymore. So, I mean, this is something which uh, really uh, can't be justified in any way. It doesn't even have a semblance of an encounter. I can understand what whatever the Honorable Judge is saying or whatever yeah. Neeraj Kumar is saying, that there is a semblance of an encounter. There is something which, you know, at least on the basis of the circumstances that have come out in public domain, one feels that there was a case for an encounter. Here, there is nothing in the public domain to suggest that there was an encounter. It's a clear, cold-blooded murder by the UP police personnel. And if they have not been suspended till today, means clearly that the government of the day is Mr. Yogi Adityanath is responsible and that he was he was a party to this crime. He has been, he has instructed his people, STF, that you kill him this way and no questions will be asked. And that's the disturbing part, if you ask me. That's really the disturbing part. Okay, I'll ask Mr. Neeraj Kumar if he wants to add into that. And Mr. Kumar, as I come to you, um, let me also po point out the fact that, you know, for me, what is more troubling is because you raised the point about nobody asked questions for when those eight policemen were killed or the encounter that happened outside Vikas Dubey's house. That's the more troubling part for me. I would want that this police and this government is able to stand in front of the families of those martyrs is able to stand in front of, you know, the family members who've lost those policemen and tell them why they died. They died because somebody tipped off Vikas Dube. They died because somebody alerted him and he was ready. They died because somebody failed in proper planning. And they died because maybe somebody didn't even train their policemen properly. Now, all of those, some of those questions at least could have been answered if Vikas Dube was alive and interrogated, which won't happen. Isn't that a loss as well? And all the others are, can't be arrested now and they will all go scot-free in this larger conspiracy, which is a disturbing part. It, it would have been a real tribute to those people who died if, you know, all these people who had been part of the conspiracy had been arrested and taken to Utah, they made to face the law. But now none of them can face the law. That's the disturbing part, if you ask me. Sorry to intervene. And I, I'd like to exit. Thank you. Those uh, people, those police yes, officers. Okay, all right. Go ahead, Mr. Yes. The those police officers uh, who have suspected, who are suspected to have passed on information uh, to Vikas Dube have uh, already been arrested, as you may know. And shortly before your program, I was watching another program on another channel, and where they interviewed uh, the next of kin 
of uh, because uh, of uh, the police officers who were martyred on the day the encounter took place uh, when the policemen were killed and all of them uh, said that today we are feeling that justice has been done and uh, i'm sure that uh, uh, the departed souls will rest in peace they all feel that justice has been done as far as they are concerned see the point let's not fool ourselves points are very uh, clear and uh, right in front of us the circumstances under which the encounter has taken place in which vikas dubey was killed are suspicious there is there cannot be any debate about it and somebody must answer must give a, a, a reply to each one of these doubts and that can only happen if there is a proper pro that is number 1 the second thing is that undoubtedly the criminal justice system has totally collapsed and just like uh, when vikas dubey had killed a sitting minister of state inside a police station in full public view and in view of policemen he the case ended in acquittal is a testimony that there is no legal system uh, worth is stop solved uh, that can be relied upon very very clearly our system has collapsed there would be no witnesses who would have come forward even if mr uh, vikas dubey was subject to trial in this case nobody would have come forward to uh, give a and the question of his being convicted the chances were very very low and as honorable justice uh, who is on our panel uh, said that even if he was convicted and sent to a jail he would have continued to uh, run his empire his criminal activities even from within the jail this is a hard reality we hear about this every day hmm. and another hmm. aspect that criminals who are i should say 50 times more desperate and more dreaded than vikas dubey have served in the parliament for four consecutive terms have 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 uh the Uh, legislative assembly of a state for two terms i am referring to mohammad shahabuddin and they i mean he was a member of parliament yes. for four terms so what is this uh, our system who would give uh, 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 you know a testimony against mohammad shahabuddin and even after he was arrested even after he was convicted he continued to rule the roost from within the confines of the jail he was shifted to a hospital all that is a matter of record and mind you it is incorrect to think that such goons only are found in the hindi heartland or so called cows belt no they are everywhere okay. and it is the same story political patronage a quid pro quo between the criminal and the politician and if the criminal himself has not decided to turn a politician so this is the uh, scenario in which we are okay i i i take some of the points that you are making and um, honestly i don't even want to get into the debate of the merits or demerits of what has happened uh, or, or whether it was revenge or whether it was staged or real or an encounter um uh, i actually just want to talk about what have we lost uh, with the with this death in terms of had he been alive would we have really managed uh, to find out all of those people who are helping him can we still do that to uh, track down those in within the police force and within the political nexus who helped him all of these years and ensure that justice is done and you are right it's the fact that you know the justice system uh, seems to be failing us so often now that people uh, are saying well maybe this is better he would have otherwise been in jail he he's won fought and won you know elections local elections local body elections uh, from sitting in jail people like shahabuddin have run their businesses sitting in jail and that especially in states like uttar pradesh uh, so what would have changed had he actually been inside jail i get those points that you are making but what i raised earlier 
it is because there are some family members while they're glad that this man is dead because he's the one who killed their family member they somehow somewhere also hope that there is more that the up police and the up government does just listen to one of those comments that we got from a uh, from a martyr's family member mai manni yogi ji mukhyamantri jo hain sunde the unko mai dhanyawad ada karunga ki unhone jo kaha wo kar dikhaya अधिकारी वर्ग कुछ राजनेता भी हो सकते हैं जिनके नाम उसने लिए हैं पहले ही कुछ और पुलिस के ही कुछ मुखबिर जब थाने के थाने बिके हुए थे तो क्या आपको लगता है एक आदमी के मर जाने से और ये सारा नेक्सस खत्म हो जाएगा एक विकास दुबे थोड़ी है बहुत सारे विकास दुबे घूम रहे हैं पूरे देश में अब यही लोग मिल करके दूसरा विकास खड़ा कर लेंगे ओके You see, that's the point. They're saying that you know now we will never know who are the others who are responsible for what happened and how it happened and were helping him all of this while. Justice Singh, you wanted to make a point before I go across to Sudha Kumar Shukla. The first thing is, I'm no longer honourable. I'm no longer a judge. I am simply a retired person. I am. I am no longer. I was honourable till I was. A, I, I was at the post. I am just Yatin Singh. Point number one. Point number two: Some of his accomplices have been arrested. It is they who informed that he was tipped off. It is they who informed that he was tipped off by the station officer. So, still something can be found out. Something can be done. But if you look into our legal system, judicial system, even Rajiv, Ga the people who assassinated Rajiv Gandhi. even they were not executed they could not be executed not only shahabuddin uh, there is a legislator there is a person from ilhaba probably he has uh, taken away the entire land in ilhaba three fourth of his land belongs to him he is been in jail convicted open murders he is an mla he is an mp how to get over that unless we are able to change the entire system and what it requires is somebody one person at least one honest person who goes away after all politician he doesn't go into the contacts and he goes ruthlessly only then we can improve and if we don't improve this is going to happen and this is wrong i am i i, I this is wrong any any kind of uh, extra judicial killing is wrong it should not happen but mm. society will approve it because the criminals go away the criminals who are everybody knows they are criminal if they go away free scot free not a single if uh, vikas dubey would have been tried in a court not a uh not a single witness the prosecution wouldn't have got a single witness against unless you are able to give some kind of witness protection program some kind of a uh some kind of a protection to them no one will come forward no conviction can be hmm. done many a times people okay. do criticize Uh, uh, let me tell you one of the matters which I dis which which when I was there in a Chhattisgarh I was looking into the Naxal. It is a case, open and shut case. But when the matter came, not even a single. There were four uh, uh, teenagers who were killed by a Naxal uh, Naxal open uh, killing in a public hearing in front of twenty five thousand people. not a single person came forward and all those came forward they said that this particular man is not the man who killed what can you do you have not matlab you have no other way except to acquit the man unless you change the system nothing will come up yes thank you so much yes Yes, absolutely. Uh, Justice Yatin is saying um, you are extremely right, and that's the unfortunate part of it. Uh, but you know, I am an eternal optimist, and I hope 
that all of us come together and uh, people within the judiciary within the police system within the government uh, and within the you know world of uh, civil rights come together to change the system rather than giving up on the system and finding other ways to bring about justice uh, which unfortunately is what is happening again and again and i'm not just talking now for far too long that has happened uh, uh, and and especially when there is a lot of sentiment attached and a lot of anger attached to the crimes of a person uh, then justice sometimes is delivered in the, this quick manner but let me say good evening uh, to mr shukla who is joining us right now of the bjp um, uh, mr uh, surya kumar shukla uh, uh, you joined us a little later earlier there were you know uh, points that were made about this entire encounter that has taken place where most of our panelists said it's very difficult to believe that this was genuinely an encounter why would a person who kind of staged his arrest after moving across four states now try to run away oh uh, uh, well uh, uh, madam i'm of the firm view that uh, there are many persons who are trying to find fault with the police story of encounter and this is a fashion also in our society to find fault with police you know that there is no police is not allowed to harm any union they are having restriction of rights i their rights have been curtailed to speak out so there is nobody to represent them only some retired officers like mr anil kumar and others they are trying to put up the a point of view of police now i uh, tell you that this uh, if this type of this story really happens that a person tries comes to near chambal valley in kanpur uh, rural area and uh, some accident takes place and uh, he finds that he can slip away in that jungle valley of chambal and yamuna where many takai sleep on camping for years are together and nobody is able to catch them because of the difficult terrain of the area now if he decides and tries to run away what is uh, not is uh, why people are not able to understand this i i will say that only those people who understand who uh, have seen that area and the person who has got so much of influence in kanpur rural area only that is the place where he decides because i told the five of his uh, uh, gunners and uh, his gunners uh, they had been killed he uh, uh, he had run away and the uh, part that he will take but when one by one and in the secondly in the history of your people is when they thought they got the information that there are uh, weapons inside the walls the chemical seals that are explosive they are uh, completely uh, uh, demolished the house in search of those weapons and got them i uh, i don't know what do these people today what has happened i am reminded of mahabharat mr shukla i am i'm sorry mujhe samajh nahi aa raha mr shukla main main up police ki existence pe sawal nahi puch rahi hu abhi aapse what i am not understanding what are you saying main kis cheez pe sawal puch rahi hu jisse aapko aapatti hai and is encounter ke facts ke bare mein ya law and order ke bare mein ya vikas dubey ko hum ek hafte bhagte rahe wo hum dhoond nahi paaye wo state ke ne ne ek baar mera sawal to khatam hone dijiye main samajh to lu ki aapne mujhe jo itni lambi ye baat batayi hai wo kyu batayi mera sawal aapse bahut seedha tha ki ye jo encounter hua hai isme bahut sare facts hain media ko rok diya toll nake pe aage nahi jaane diya वो आदमी जो खुद अरेस्ट हुआ बिना किसी प्रोटेस्ट किए आ गया वो अब क्यों भागने की कोशिश कर रहा था और उसको हमने बोला कि वो भाग गया इसलिए गोली चलाई लेकिन गोली उसके सामने लगी पीठ पे नहीं मैंने ये एनकाउंटर से रिलेटेड सवाल पूछे अभी तो मैंने आपसे कोई और सवाल पूछे ही नहीं यूपी पुलिस के बारे में तो या तो आप मुझे ये बोल दे कि मैं मान लू की ये ये स्टेज एनकाउंटर था तो फिर मैं मान जाऊंगी कि ये स्टेज एनकाउंटर था फिर मैं दूसरे सवाल पूछ लूंगी पर मेरे सवाल से आपके जवाब का लिंक नहीं समझ आया खूब लिंक समझ आएगा मैम आप ये समझिए कि मैं ये बता रहा हूँ कि ऐसा इनकाउंटर होता है और आ, ये जो लोग ये इमेजिनेशन कर रहे हैं कि इनकाउंटर गलत है मैं आ, मैं आई एम डिफिनेटली सेंसिंग सेंस ऑफ अटैचमेंट टूवर्ड्स क्रिमिनल वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम दोज पीपल 
दैट दे वांट की अरे वो न मारा गया अच्छा होता देर आर देर इज अ बिग लॉबी हु वांटेड दैट स्टोरी शुड कंटिन्यू दे शुड गेट द बेनिफिट एंड गेट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू क्रिटिसाइज एंड कंडेम यूपी पुलिस हैज फेल्ड एंड होल सिस्टम हैज फेल्ड दैट इज वाई दे वॉन्टेड ऑल ऑफ सडन बिग शॉक टू देम केम स्टर्डे वेन ही वॉज अरेस्टेड so they started saying no it is not arrest it is surrender it is surrender then when today he was killed in the morning lekin lekin yeah, having big objection oh it is not real encounter and they want that arrest mr encounter. shukla mr shukla ye one minute please one minute mai किसके ओके नहीं आप जो बता रहे हैं वो सही है मेरे ख्याल से आपने दिन में बहुत सारे दूसरे चैनल्स पे करी होंगी डिबेट जहां पे यही सब झगड़े और यही सब बोला गया होगा पर यहाँ मेरा नाम पे वो सवाल नहीं उठ रहा है मुझे तो ये चिंता है कि जो लोग उसकी मदद कर रहे थे जो पुलिस में थे शायद नेता भी होंगे पता नहीं आ, आपकी पार्टी के नहीं तो समाजवादी पार्टी के या बसपा के जिसके भी हो जो लोग उसको इतने सालों से मदद कर रहे थे अभी तक जबकि वो भाग पाया और एक स्टेट से दूसरी स्टेट चला गया कोई उसको पकड़ नहीं पाया उन लोगों को अब कैसे पकड़ेंगे ये तो चला गया जो आ, इस केस में जो भी बाकी हैं यूपी पुलिस इतनी सक्षम है कि आप देखिएगा कि एक एक अपने अंजाम तक पहुंचेंगे किसी को छोड़ा नहीं जाएगा नंबर एक बात नंबर दो बात ये स्टोरी सारी इसीलिए हो रही है कि आपकी जो उन्नीस की क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर कोड बनी हुई है उसमें ये पावर लिखी हुई है कि किसी भी क्रिमिनल के केस को कोर्ट से वापस लिया जा सकता है दैट इज वाई ये मोस्ट ऑफ द क्रिमिनल्स कीप ऑन ट्राइंग दैट वी शुड मेक कॉन्टेक्ट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्फ्लुएंशियल पर्सन ये कानून बदलने की जरूरत है हाउ कम दिस मैन हैज कम आउट सो मेनी टाइम्स इन सिक्सटी केसेज ऑन बेल एंड स्टिल हैज नॉट बीन सिस्टम हैज नॉट बीन एबल टू कीप हिम बिहाइंड द बार्स परमानेंटली इन जेल और अगर ये इस बार भी जेल जाता तो ये पक्का था कि ये उसी तरह फिर मौज करता और ये 500 करोड़ रुपए की जो दौलत इसने इकट्ठा की अपने माफिया गिरी से वो फिर चलती रहती अवर सिस्टम अवर जुडिशियल प्रोसेस ऑफ पनिशिंग द क्रिमिनल्स हैज टोटली कोलेब्स अठारह की है हमारी इंडियन पेनल कोड इसको पूरे को बदलने की जरूरत है और रीजन यह है कि क्रिमिनल्स आर नॉट गेटिंग पनिश्ड इन टाइम नॉट बीइंग पनिश्ड विद प्रॉपर पनिशमेंट सेंटेंस दैट इज व्हाई देयर मोरल इज गोइंग हाई एंड सम पीपल हु आर इंटरेस्टेड इन डिमोरलाइजिंग पुलिस तो सो दैट दे कैन अब गेट द अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ क्रिटिसाइजिंग द गवर्नमेंट कैन कम टू पावर बाय बी द पब्लिक वो लोग दे आर फीलिंग वेरी ग्लूमी एंड सैड टुडे अरे एक मौका मिला था कि हमको कि हम कहते कि नहीं पकड़ पाई पुलिस फेल हो गई और वो मौका हाथ से निकल गया तो आ, मैं जो आपको कह रहा था उस बात को जरा गौर कर लीजिएगा कि जब महाभारत का युद्ध होने वाला था ना उसके पहले भी द्रोणाचार्य कृपाचार्य सब बैठे थे और द्रौपदी का चीर हरण दुर्योधन करा रहा था और वही हाल आज के द्रोणाचार्य आज के ये दुर्योधन यही क्रिमिनल हैं और चूंकि ये लोग प्रिय बने रहने के लिए अपनी अपनी गद्दी बचाए रखने के लिए चुप हैं सजा नहीं दे रहे इन बदमाशों को इसलिए फिर से महाभारत हो रहा है गली गली में रावण हो रहे हैं क्यों हो रहे हैं मेरे को अभी भी यही दुख है मुझे अभी भी यही दुख है शुक्ला जी मैं आपकी बात समझ गई आपका महाभारत का एग्जाम्पल भी समझ गई समय अभी कम है इसलिए मैं इंटरप्ट कर रही हूँ आपको और नीरज कुमार जी को धन्यवाद कि आप हमारे साथ जुड़े बट व्यूअर्स आई जस्ट वांट टू से दिस दिस इज व्हाट पेंट्स मी टुनाइट इट्स नॉट अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट इट रेडेड गैंगस्टर हैज बीन किल्ड हैज बीन गन डाउन ही किल वे टू मेनी पीपल देवर ओवर 50 60 केसेस वी वुड नेवर वी कुड नेवर ब्रिंग दैम टू जस्टिस दैट वन टाइम दैट ही ओपनली शॉट समबडी वी स्टिल कोडन गेट हिम कन्विक्टेड द द हार्ड ब्रेकिंग एंड द डिप्रेसिंग पॉइंट टुनाइट is that almost everybody from the top of the judiciary to the top of the police to those who are in politics right now running the governments in our state almost everybody had the same thing to say to me that our system is so broken that our system has so many faults that we so often fail to provide justice that our system actually helps criminals sustain 
that this is the best way. Killing them in an encounter is the best way. That is the unfortunate part. Nobody wants to sit and try and fix the system. Nobody wants to sit and discuss and seek accountability from governments, from lawyers or judges of fixing the system. Everybody wants to either take the shortcut or look the other way when that's done. So gradually, is this going to become a norm in our country? Where cases go on for far too long, where criminals function from within the jail, so our only answer is to simply shoot them down. Think about it. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation. On the other side, we've got representatives of more political parties and senior journalists joining us and as we continue this. And I get you more details of the Dubai encounter. Stay with me.